governance challenges in federations. But it is a challenge that requires the full support of this house. We have already put these federations on notice and we invite this house to support that process of streamlining federations. Allow me to conclude, Honorable Speaker, with the question on Talanta Hela. Honorable Speaker, Talanta Hela is a, a very revolutionary program. It is a program which is intended to fix the myriad challenges that we inherited in this sector. And I had started by making reference to those challenges. We found a country banned by FIFA. We found a country on the verge of being banned by World Athletics because of doping. We found a country with no single stadium approved by FIFA or CAF for football activities. The whole arena of sports infrastructure was completely tattered. We found a country where federations had myriad issues. We also inherited a scene, Honorable Speaker, where that whole area of what we call the creatives was really not consolidated. And I'm talking about musicians, I'm talking about film, I'm talking about royalties payable to our creatives. So that is the scene we inherited. To help fix these challenges, we imagined what we consider to be a silver bullet. And that silver bullet is what we are calling the Talanta Hela Initiative. This initiative, Honorable Speaker, is about launching sports and the creatives as a mega industry. It's about monetizing talents of our young people. And, Honorable Speaker, as I speak right now, we have already had a very successful national youth uh, talent camp. The Talanta Hela Intercounty Football Tournament is going on all over the country. In fact, we launched that tournament in the home county of the Honorable Deputy Speaker of Wasingishu at Kipchoge Keino Stadium in a very successful ceremony. That is going on. Honorable Speaker, on the Talanta Hela app, that app is not just an app. The Talanta Hela is actually a digital system. It's a digital system that would allow scouting of talents from all over the country through the virtual space. It is actually a fantastic system so that a child in Turukana, for instance, can be able to send their skill through that app to a team of scouts. Now, what was ignited by His Excellency the President at State House on June 9 was the system, and the system is ready. I can confirm to this House that there was a challenge that caused a delay in the completion of the screening room because it is a whole ecosystem from the point where you take a clip and put it in the system where it is then transmitted to a screening center. That screening center, Honorable Speaker, suffered procurement delays and we have been given a date of September 4th for the completion of the screening room. So, Honorable CS, are you confirming it does not exist? It exists only that it has not been activated. But the system exists. And the reason why I need to clarify this is that the moment you activate it, you will start sending content, but the content will not have a destination because the destination is still being put together. And that destination is what we call the Talent Screening Center at Kasarani, and I invite this Honorable House, they can visit Kasarani at the Kenya Academy of Sports and confirm that actually we are working round the clock to complete the screening room at the Kenya Academy of Sports in Kasarani. There's but a the point, system is point of order from uh, the Deputy Speaker. Uh, uh, Cabinet Secretary is confirming that when the, the President launched something that was not ready, that is what we need to know. Because if it's not live to the public, then it was not necessary to launch it. So let's get a confirmation. He's saying it's under progress. So whatever was launched is something under construction. I think we need that, that should come out clearly. Don't try and say we are building and it's staying here and it's in Kasarani. It was, it was launched, which means it should have been live to the public. And it is not. 
I know there are many interventions on this. Honorable CS, please save yourself what you see in the House, because the question the Deputy Speaker asked is whether what was launched in State House exists as it is as or not. And I think what I'm hearing from you is that it doesn't exist. Honorable Ocheng, I'll hear Honorable Ocheng, then I'll hear Honorable Fatuma. Honorable Speaker, uh, I've sat here and listened pensively to my friend, the CS for sports. And I can tell you for sure, from where I sit, that he's not in charge. Because he's kept passing the buck to federation after federation. That on this Olympics, it's the Olympics committee that is in charge. On football, it is the football federation. It can't be that way. Honorable members, order, I, I, order I want to ask my question. I want to ask my question. Yes, ask Madam a Speaker. question Madam Speaker. on the what? same, on the what? same, Talanta Hela, because I will open a few others as follow-up questions. No, Madam Speaker, I was going to ask also that I don't have to come back, if you allow me. Honorable members, we've already exhausted the one hour that the speaker had intended for this question. Okay. I would request okay. we okay. let the CS finish, then I will give a few more interventions, and then we will go to the second part of the question, which actually now touches on aquatic, and we had a few members well, on the well, same. Well, so the CS can finish. Honorable Cheng, you'll wind up, then I'll give the CS, and then we'll continue with the others later. Yeah, after yes. the CS. Yeah, what I wanted to know from this, the minister is what he is doing as minister to ensure that it takes back the charge of the ministry and sports affairs in the country. Number two, we've heard that this government works through something called one government approach. And that's what happened to the question by the deputy speaker. Is it now the police of government to keep launching things because it's just not sports? You tell the president to go and launch things that are not ready, then you tell us that there was procurement challenges. Why didn't you wait for the procurement challenges to be sorted out first before you launch, Chair? Thank you so much. Cabinet Secretary, please make it precise. Thank you. I'll be very precise on this, uh, Honorable Speaker. What I want to confirm is that the President launched a whole initiative. That initiative is called Talanta Hela. This initiative was launched on June 9, but it had a program. It had a calendar. That calendar included the inter-county football tournament. This program was launched on 9th. The tournament started one week ago because it had a calendar and it had a process of preparation, including working closely with the counties. The tournament was part of it. We had something called National Talent Camp. That talent camp happened and was concluded last week. So there is a series of activities. When you talk about the Talanta Hela initiative, it's not just about the app. It's a series of activities. And in fact, I can confirm to this house that the app was intended to go up during the period of the tournament because that is when really we want to pick up, to pick up the, the talents. And so it is not true that the president launched something non-existent the president launched a program that is actually being rolled out. The program is being rolled out through the inter-county football program. The program is being rolled out through the National Talent Camp. The program is being rolled out by the Creatives Economy Program. For instance, I can confirm to this house that the entire ecosystem of the football, of the sports undertaken by schools, the second term ball game that concluded in Kakamega, is a program that was fully funded by this ministry to the tune of 267 million Kenya shillings. And it is from that program that we brought 2,000 students to Nairobi for the National Talent Camp. That is part of the Talanta Hela program. It is under the same program that we are building partnerships around music and film, and we, had, we have even signed partnerships with a number of partners like Tres. TV, like the American Grammys, and all these partnerships are part of that Talanta Hela ecosystem. So it's a very broad program. It has a long implementation time frame, and each of the activities that are set under this program are rolling on, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker. 
I want us to make progress, honorable members. I can see there are some members who had asked some questions. Honorable Basile, Basil, you had asked the issue of joy riders. If I remember well, Honorable Rachel Nyamai, you had asked the CS whether he has issues with money. Honorable Memusi had asked the chair, had asked the CS whether he's willing to resign. CS, you will respond to those three. Then I will get to the last, the last uh, leg of these questions. Honorable members, please hold your horses. We will try to cover as many as possible. Honorable, honorable speaker, on the question by uh, Honorable Basil, I am not aware of any joyriders being part of any official delegation accompanying any Kenyan team to any event. If it's the event that we are discussing here, the Para Olympics in Berlin. The ministry was represented by only two officers, who I have named here. The CEO of the Kenya Academy of Sports and the acting director of sports. Those were the only officials from the ministry. The, Her Excellency, the second lady, had a delegation, and that is a delegation that we were managing separately. Other than those two delegations, and the officials accompanying the team, together with the athletes. I'm not aware of any other joyriders. But if the honorable member has any details of any joyriders, I would be more than happy to get those details, uh, uh, honorable speaker. But I'm not aware of any. Honorable Nyamai, on the question of resources, I have answered this question, and I have made it very clear that this ministry is among the least funded ministries. And that is, not, that is not a lie. This ministry receives the least funding by government. And it is always a struggle. And even the sports fund, which was intended to be some kind of backup for this ministry, is crowded by so many other needs. Health dips in, education dips in, tourism and culture dips in, everybody dips in their hand, which crowds out the resources available for sports and the arts. We would be very grateful to this house to pass regulations, to ring fence. And let me announce, Honorable Madam Speaker, that we have actually brought here a formal request asking this Honorable House to ring fence the sports fund for sports and the creatives strictly. Honorable uh, my good brother, Honorable Cheng, I have not, in any language, whether English, Swahili, or Lunyala dialect that I grew up speaking back in the villages of Budalangi, I have not said at all that I am not in control of this ministry. What I have, and I can confirm to you, Honorable Madam Speaker, is that I'm fully in, in touch and in control of this ministry. But I have made it clear that this is a public institution and it cannot be run as a one-man show. I share responsibilities with my two principal secretaries. I share responsibilities with my technical officers. And I also know that sports has other stakeholders. Federations play a critical role in the management of sports. The reason why Kenya was banned by FIFA in 2021 is because government attempted to do something which FIFA interpreted as meddling in the affairs of the Federation. It is something which repeatedly crops up because Federations have a role. And if we genuinely want to improve sports in this country, please oversight the ministry and make sure the ministry is performing optimally, but don't close your eye to Federations. Federations have a critical, critical role to play. Let us make federations accountable. Let us make federations improve their governance culture. If federations are performing and the ministry is performing, definitely sports in this country will improve. And especially if we provide sufficient resources to support these activities. I submit, uh, Honorable Speaker. Order members. Order members, we will make progress on this matter. I would request 
that uh, the CS answers part two of this uh, question so that we also open another window for follow-up questions and we will get as many as possible at that point. Honorable CS, and please, Honorable CS, we understand the history and maybe where you're coming from, but please stick to the question on the issues. Be precise and to the question. What is your point of order, Honorable Memusi? I had already raised your question with the Honorable CS. Would you be willing to resign? I don't want you to repeat it, Honorable CS. Honorable Memusi, do not repeat the question because you had already asked. CS, as you answer the second part, kindly respond to Honorable Memusi. Honorable Speaker, I believe I have responded to pretty much all the questions raised except the issue raised by Honorable Memusi. Honorable CS, address the House. Just Thank continue. You. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yourself. the CS, no, let the CS make the response, then we will give a few more members. We will let the Cabinet Secretary answer this question. Please go on, answer Honorable Memusi's question. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I have no doubt whatsoever in my mind, in my work, in my imagination, I have no doubt that I am performing well as Cabinet Secretary for Sports, the Arts, and Youth Affairs. Honorable Speaker, 10 months ago, when I walked into this ministry as the Cabinet Secretary, I inherited an arena that was in a total mess, as I have already indicated. I inherited an arena, as I said, football band. Honorable CS, please yes. respond, just precisely. I can respond to this house. Are you willing to resign based on these issues that have been raised on this floor? I believe, Honorable Speaker, that there is absolutely no sufficient ground that would cause my resignation because I believe I am performing exemplary well as cabinet sector responsible for this ministry. Order members, order members, order members, I know we have many follow-up questions on this issue, but I would like us to let the CS go to the second part and we will open it up again. But I know Honorable Wanjiko had asked a question which has not been answered. Order, Honorable Roko, order. Honorable Wanjiko, the question that you had raised on payment, Honorable CS, respond to that issue. Or not on record, Honorable Wanjiko. Honorable CS, Honorable CS, there was a question on the payment. You said it's, a, it's in the process. How long and I, when I, is it supposed to be completed? I can confirm... Honorable Speaker to the Honorable Wanjiku Muya, that with the little glitches that have already been uh, settled by the Principal Secretary and the fund, I believe that in no more than a week, the fund should be in the accounts of the athletes. In more than, no more than a week, Honorable, Honorable Speaker. May I, may I now, Honorable Speaker, come to the question of uh, aquatic sports? And Honorable Speaker, let me from the outset indicate to this House that the state of swimming in this country is symptomatic, is a microcosm of the challenges in federations that I have repeatedly alluded to. A challenge where Federations have, for a long time, not been ready to respect the law of this country, where federations have been reluctant to be accountable. We have a law in this country, Honorable Speaker, called the Sports Act. 
it is a law that we put in place to regulate this whole arena of sports. We enacted this law in 2013, and Honorable Speaker, I was actually the Minister for Sports in the coalition government when I stood on this floor. That time I was both Minister for Sports and Member of Parliament for Budalangi, and I stood on this floor to move the Sports Act for enactment. We have had serious challenges in the intervening period in enforcement of that statute. Today, what ails Aquatics Kenya or Kenya Aquatics? The issue here is failure to comply with the law and the regulations. But most importantly, Honorable Speaker, is that as we speak today, this federation is embroiled in a court case, a legal tussle. This case that has moved from the sports tribunal to the high court is now styled as Nairobi High Court Petition Number E08 of 2021, Margaret Ngungu Mwasha and another versus the Kenya Swimming Federation and three others. Two factions of this federation have gone to court. And the bone of contention is who should be in control of this federation? And how should the elections for this federation be conducted? One faction is clinging onto a constitution that they produced as a faction. The other faction is insisting that things have to be done differently, which has caused a major stalemate. I want to confirm to this honorable house that we have made effort to intervene in this matter by engaging directly with World Aquatics. This house also needs to take notice of one major issue when it comes to dealing with the international federations. International federations are very protective of their turf. They are very protective of their affiliates. You touch an affiliate, the World Federation tells you that is government interference. And so we have been tussling with World Aquatics to allow government to exercise the law and specifically to exercise, Honorable Speaker, the mandate in Section 54 of the Sports Act. Section 54 of the Act allows the Cabinet Secretary to make an intervention in the management of a federation. We have gone back and forth with World Aquatics because they feel if we deploy Section 54 of the Sports Act, then they will pretty much walk out of Kenya and completely freeze Kenya out of international swimming activities. But I'm glad to inform this house that we had a breakthrough this morning with World Aquatics. And World Aquatics has now agreed that we can form a team under Section 54 on consultation with them because they have already put together a team called Stabilization Committee. They have been very protective of that committee and they had even refused to allow government to have membership on that committee. We have agreed with World Aquatics that we can now consult and put together a joint team, a team that involves representation desired by World Aquatics and the representation that meets the requirements of Section 54 of the Sports Act. I want to assure this House that we have held multiple meetings. I have held a meeting with parents. This is a sport where parents have got a very big voice because it involves minors, and previously, we have had the challenge of these minors being abused. And so parents insist to have a big say. I have met parents. I have met the Stabilization Committee, and I have engaged World Aquatics. I believe that with the agreement today that we can form a joint committee, 
we should be able to resolve this matter. But as even as give that undertaking, the elephant in this room is this High Court Petition number 08 of 2021, which we must get out of court because through this application, we have an injunction that stops anybody from purporting to undertake elections or the management of swimming activities. Let me also assure this house that among the asks we have put before World Aquatics is that we have asked World Aquatics that as we go on with this process of putting together the committee and preparing elections and agreeing on a constitution for aquatic Kenya, we can have an arrangement where our swimmers can continue to participate in international competitions. We have an event coming up in uh, February next year. It is an important activity because it's a qualifier for the Olympics. We have asked World Aquatics that as we deal with these issues, let us not punish the athletes. Let us deal with the governance issues, but have an arrangement that will allow our swimmers to participate in the qualifiers, and if they qualify, to participate in the Olympics. I submit, Honorable Speaker. The first will go to Honorable Fatuma from Migori. Uh, Honorable CS, I see you have a team. Please note the questions. There are many. Honorable Fatuma, give Honorable Fatuma the microphone. Honorable Speaker, it took me an hour to get an intervention so that I could raise a point of information. I have seen in this house that the CS is being given evidences from Facebook, printed and being read by one person. It has not been laid here. We don't know what that person is reading. I've seen a honorable member using an SMS from I don't know who wrote the SMS. And based on that evidence, the CS is being asked, are you ready to resign? How do you resign from information that you don't even know provided from Facebook? I request that all CSS be treated the same. We have tried as opposition bringing information to this house and even certified by lawyers, our information was rejected. What is it about this yes that an SMS and a Facebook can lead to his resignation? May I be informed properly if the CSS are the same in this house? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Fatuma. But I want to confirm that the question that was asked for on resignation was by Honorable Memusi and was totally actually from your side and different from what was laid on this side. All right, Honorable Alice Nanga from uh, Thika. Honorable Speaker, mine, uh, I just need to go to ask CS. I'm the chair on social protection, and I know there are these sportsmen and women who are able differently. When they go out there, do you, they, are they given special treatment as they deserve? Because they are not like any other sportsman and a woman. They need special attention before they leave here. Are they given even people to take them around? Because I know they go for Olympics, but they also need to be treated in a special manner. They are vulnerable. They need to be treated as such. And another thing I've realized uh, CS is communication. On your side, communication has failed. Because right now you have told us that you brought 2,000 people here in Nairobi. In fact, we don't know where they came from, from this nation. I know they came from somewhere, but we don't know from where because there's no that information. If you see drama festivals or music festivals, they are known across the country, even when they are being performed. But when you hear about these activities the ministry is undertaking, we have no such information. And these members of parliament, if you want information to reach every corner of this nation, just involve the members of the National Assembly. By tomorrow morning, every person will know what is happening in the youth sector. But if you keep to yourself, we are going to be experiencing difficulties like we are doing right now. If there's that football that uh, was going on the other day, we only saw it on the television. We did not know it is going to inter-counties. That information flow from the ministry to the grassroots where it matters. Because when we go to the grassroots, all the youths are on our case. What is happening 
Why is it our constituency not involved in football or when youths are going to Nairobi? Let information flow from your ministry to the grassroots where it matters most. Thank you very much. Honorable members, let us keep our questions precise and to the point so that as many people can speak. Honorable KJ. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. And my two questions are very succinct to the Honorable CS Ababu Namwamba. And it is in regard to the Federation. The first one is in regard to the federations that Honorable CS has severally referred to. And Madam Speaker, noting that uh, Honorable Amina Abdallah, uh, this is the CS Emeritus as Gazette notice, burning FKF has never been voided, it has never been vacated, it has never been reversed or challenged, and there are two court orders which are confirming that due process was followed in the burning of FKF. The question here to Honorable CS is whether FKF, as one of the federations that is pulling back sports in this country, whether the FKF officers who are in office now, Mr. CS, are legally in office. It is important also to ask, noting that even if they were in office legally, their term would be ending in February, are there active plans to prepare for elections in the coming year? Madam Speaker, the second question I ask as a Chair, Communication, Information and Innovation. Is the Honorable CS aware of any deals that are being cut with Azam TV of Tanzania? And if there is any such deal that is being cut, how is it being cut at the expense of the national broadcaster, KBC? Have we checked KBC? Have we checked their ability to air live matches? And have they been proven not fit for purpose, even at a moment where there is a cabinet memo in front of the cabinet where he sits on the revamping and reorganization of KBC. Honorable CS, kindly. Honorable Mark Nyamita. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, I have two questions, but uh, I'll just make a comment. And I just want to urge my colleagues because and I speak as a sports practitioner, I actually run a club, and I have interacted with these federations. It may be important for the House to know that uh, the ministry's powers in dealing with federations is only to a certain limit. And maybe it's about time that this House might want to consider giving more powers to the CS if we are to expect if we are to expect some of the expectations that I'm, I'm hearing from some of my colleagues here, because otherwise then, if we also come to this house, Madam Speaker, and refer to hot discussions that are going on social media to grill a cabinet secretary, we might miss the point, I must say. Having said that, Madam Speaker, let me also say that I think, and I'm saying as a practitioner of sports myself, that there's been a great... There's a point of order from Honorable Wanjiku. The speaker is that, is the Honorable Member in order to refer to the discussion here as hot air from social media when we know that the Special Olympic happened in Berlin 2023 and it was the subject matter to bring these other debates? Is he in order? Honorable Mark Nyamita. Actually, what concerns me is whether under Standing Order 90, you're bound to declare interest yourself as a club owner. <coughs> uh, Madam Speaker, uh, there's no conflict of interest in this particular matter. I'm, just, I'm only sharing my experience having managed a club. And, uh, you know, there's no point of conflict of interest. I'm only sharing my, for the benefit of the greater house, of how federations have powers that the ministry sometimes do not have. But uh, just to the point of order raised by Honorable Wanjiku Muya, I think the word hot air is from you, but you will agree with me that many of the members here have alluded to discussions that are going on on social media. And for the purpose of record, Honorable TJ Kajuang did mention, the Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Honorable Majority Leader did refer to what is going on on social media. And I'm only saying, if we have no 
if we have no way of verifying what we see on social media, because on social media, some of us have even been declared dead, yet we are here. So it would be unfair, really, to even ask the CS, really, to resign on issues of dressing. But back to my question, Madam Speaker. I just wanted to ask, is uh, the CS... You have already taken two minutes. You said you have no question. You have a I have comment. a question. I, I have a question. Now... I no. have a question, Honorable Madam Speaker. Nyamita, you a... started by saying you will not ask a question. You have a comment, which I have given you I two didn't minutes. say that, Madam Speaker. My question we is very... Just answered. one question. We can check the answer, but the next que uh, moment will go to Honorable Indikiri on this side. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I'm sure the owner of CS is aware of the Kenya Handball, De Kenya Dev Handball Championship team. Madam Speaker, the Kenya Dev Handball Championship team missed their international match in July 2023 because they could not get the visas. They were referred to the Ministry of Sports. And subsequently, they were disqualified from participating in 2025 because of missing the visa. The games took place, Madam Speaker, in the city of Copenhagen, in the Republic of the Government of Denmark. The question is, can the Cabinet Secretary explain the reason why the team was denied visa by the Government of Denmark? And what step the ministry will take in the future to ensure that these people with special needs are given passports and visas by the respective government as the parent ministry? Thank you. Before the next speaker, allow me to recognize in the public gallery uh, students from Karama Academy, Msambweni constituency, Kuala County. Please join me in welcoming them to observe the proceedings of the House. The next chance will go to Honorable KK from Molo. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I have, I, have, I, have two, I have one comment and one question. And at a time when we are all lamenting about how the CS has performed, I would like to congratulate him on the Bukungu Stadium finals that was done for national for schools as in that really showed that was really nice i didn't know it was a ministry of sport that was doing that and kenyans are saying that they, they are ready to to go and pay to watch our local matches so that was very good uh, on the on the talanta hella up uh, honorable CS that you keep re kept referring to i checked on my app store it's not available and maybe I thought it's because I'm using an iPhone. So I've asked my colleague who's using an Android, and still is not there. So is the app working? Has the, has the app been uh, been operationalized? And if not, then when is going to be operationalized? That, and with that, I thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker on, the same, on the same point. Madam uh, order, Honorable Roku. Madam the next chance will go to the member, Honorable Abu Ahmed. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I did speak, but I was stopped. Uh, the, is the Cabinet Secretary aware that four swimmers, namely Emily Muteti, Maria Brunella, Swale Talib, Monyo Maina, attended the World Aquatic Championship in Japan last month, were admitted under the suspended member federation without any support from the ministry. Despite the lack of funding, the team managed to set a new national record. The four athletes did an email correspondence to the cabinet secretary on July 11, 2023, detailing the challenges they faced and continue to face up to date. The ministry has never replied or responded to the email. The sports ministry doesn't seem to care about the welfare of swimming and sports in general. They even texted you on your WhatsApp number with all the details on the complaint. Thank you. 
The next chance, Honorable Mutunga. Make it short and precise. Okay. Uh, this, is one, this one is working. Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. Honorable Speaker, I want to speak of a very specific issue that has had to do with me. The Honorable, the Honorable CS has said is up to the task and he, he, he has everything in his control. Honorable Speaker, when it comes to communication, uh, I would like to, tell, to ask the, honor, the, the Honorable CS whether he is aware that I personally invited him to launch an award of a winning, a, a Pan African Book Award by a member of my community. Writing in this country is extremely poor. We need to encourage the young people to write. I personally spoke to his PA. I sent a letter to the PA. The award is being given tomorrow. What is the question? We do not have any response. Is he aware? Is, is he in charge of his ministry? Is he, does what he is have that question? communication? Honorable members, we do not personalize this matter. Uh, member for Syricia. Member for Syricia. The microphone is roaming behind you. <laughs> yes. Oh. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, some of the questions I think are personal. I mean, but let me ask mine. Uh, Honorable Siri, recently you, you gave out uh, 100 uh, million to sports teams and individuals. In the first time it's happening in this country, Waziri, I want to ask you, could this have been, uh, could this have contributed to your uh, problems with some of uh, those who did not benefit? Honorable Umi. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My question to the Minister would be regarding the National Talent Academy on the Talantahela program. My, I'm concerned because are we just making the, the young players just play and play without having uh, professional agents to scout them so that they can get professional football careers? Because between the month of March and uh, August, I'm aware of private agents who've been coming to the country and have scouted at least 10 Kenyans. But in the Talantahela program, when I looked at it, it doesn't have any nearby deliverables where we can say in the next few years, at least we've signed these young players from across the country. So my question to him is, does the ministry have a plan where they're partnering with agents? Because football, unlike the athletics, do not just run and have their scouting happening from within. They have to be signed to professional Football Academy. So that's my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Justice. Yeah, Madam Speaker, my question to the CS is very brief. Um, Honorable CS, we've been doing extremely well in athletics and more particularly we've been doing well in the steeple chase as, as, as a specific event. Um, is, are you aware, Honorable CS, that we we'll seem to be losing grip on steeple chase? And what are you doing specifically to make sure that traditional event gets back to Kenya? Thank you. Member for Kisses. Where is the microphone? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Madam Speaker. I think also I will go as uh, my colleague just is very brief. Number one, <clears throat> Madam Speaker, all of us we are aware that currently Kenya participating in the World Championship in Buddhism. 
and uh, coming from... Uh, Did you mean Budapest? Buda Hungary, you can use the other name, you can feel it yourself. <laughs> Good our best. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Professor. Okay, sense. Thank this you, house is a house of record. Buddha best. Thank you. You Madam mean Speaker. Budapest, <laughs> not Buddhism. <laughs> thank you, Madam Speaker. No, it, it depends with the, with the school you went. I, I, I went to Lomotu in primary, so you can excuse me for that. Now, um, Madam Speaker, as you've said, Wasingishu and Moso Loret has acquired a named city of Champions because of the athletes that come from that area or they reside in that place. Recently, I saw the CS visited the Lorid, and since I had no prior, or we as leaders from there, we had no prior information, we would have accompanied him, and we would have dwelled issues around there, but since we have an occasion now from the CS, I wish to know the deliberate measures you put in place to save us from the shame of Kipchaka Stadium that has been there for years. This is the only stadium we have that could give opportunity to at least to train to practice, and maybe even the current challenges you are experiencing in stupid is because we have no field for them to train. What are the deliberate measures you are putting in place? Because I saw you there, I'm sure you have information, and you never made even a statement that would have assisted us to be together with you. Thank you. Honorable Kagombe. The microphone. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I have uh, three concerns to the Honorable CS. One, on the issue of uh, the Olympics, he said, uh, on the issue of money, he said that we have had a challenge of accounts. But he also confirmed that he paid the allowances. So this account that paid allowances was not able to pay the monies for the winners for the medals. So I want to find out how this account is able to pay for some monies and not the others. Number two, it is good. He has observed that he had a meeting with the World Aquatics today morning, and he alluded to what they discussed. But this, Kenya is watching, and the people, especially who are in swimming, have been waiting for this day. A lot of young children who now cannot swim, even in, at personal capacities, because we've been banned from swimming, are wondering, and they wanted something concrete to hold on. The qualifiers for the Olympics are coming up on February. We are unlikely to have had the CS again in this house. So we want to know now concrete plans that he has with World Aquatics to make sure that our children participate in the qualifiers for the Olympics in the swimming, uh, for swimming as they organize that. But I'm also concerned, Madam Speaker, that we have two functions in a federation and we are not able to moderate between two factions that have kept us in court since 2014. I expected that uh, the Honorable CS is able to put these two people together so that we do not have to wait for the courts. They can have an out-of-court settlement so that our children stop suffering. Thank you, Ms. Madam Speaker. I also want to confirm on Abu Kagombe that uh, the CS can be made to appear in this house any other time if the house so uh, feels important. Uh, majority Whip. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I'll pick it up from where Honorable Kagombe has uh, uh, stopped from. And um, uh, while holding brief for uh, Honorable Majority Leader, I want to ask the CS to come clear on uh, the question that uh, the Honorable Majority Leader asked on the aquatic sports, and particularly the question uh, uh, Roman 2C, where he required him to give an undertaking that uh, Kenya will participate in the World Aquatic Event that is scheduled on, on, uh, in February 2024 in Doha, Qatar, and the 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris, France. Honorable Speaker, he has stated that uh, there are two factions that have taken each other to court uh, in the, on the issue of the Stabilization Committee that was established on 28 June 2022. But he hasn't come out clear on whether the uh, the ministry is making effort, possibly even to in, invoke the alternative uh, dispute resolution mechanism, at least for the purposes of, uh, you know, hastening this process to make sure that these particular teams participate in the 2024 Summer Olympics and uh, the February 2024, uh, uh, you know, events that are scheduled there. What measures have they taken? Have they been involved? Have they enjoying themselves in the case that is in the High Court? That is a question, Honorable Speaker. Thanks. 
uh, Honorable Ben Suda. Thank you very, very much. I've really been trying since morning. Huh? <laughs> now, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving this opportunity. First and foremost, allow me to appreciate that the CS was appointed a youthful and, so far as I know him, an intelligent young man who must deliver and champion the youth sports, everything that is under his docket. From the discussion since I listened, the preliminary of the introduction of the majority leader, a lot could be alluded by the fact that Honorable Kajwang mentioned that there were some disorders which need to be put to order. I had a lot of emphasis on the roles of the majority leader directed to the CS. To me, that was not fair at this juncture because that was not the purpose as to why he was called. Secondly, Madam Speaker, there was also a mention of reckless talks. I was dis disappointed as a professional teacher when the children are on the gallery and I hear a senior member of parliament talking about, I don't care what is in the social media. Very unfortunate for elected leaders. That must be corrected to all of us. Number three, from the discussions which the CS has been asked, it is mandatory that the CS has to table the records and reports on the framework of his work in terms of procurement, in terms of the, the activities taking place within the country and outside the country, and align it to the budget, to the committee of sports, so that issues are verified. I was also seeing a case whereby the deputy speaker gave out the photos of pictures of Adidas. I don't know Nikes, I don't know what. We cannot verify that. Madam Speaker, I want to remember one time when Honorable Atinda Molo gave out a report of signed documents. This very house was disapproved and said that we cannot accept that. It is not authentic. And so even the Adidas photos are not authentic. Until the Committee for Sports summons the, the CS for Sports to sit before them. One thing that I'm talented, Madam Speaker, is psychology. I want to say that the discussion I'm seeing here is tailored towards crucifixion. Even Jesus was told he claims his God. Jesus was told he claims his word. I think we are leaders and we are mature. Please, I'm now asking Honorable my question. Honorable Bensuda, Honorable Bensuda, you are, now, no, you are now debating. If, no, you are now debating. I will give you 30 seconds if you have a question. Ask the question. Very fast. And one second, I'll ask three questions. What framework do you have for the female gender of this country in active participation of sports, not necessarily in, uh, uh, international? Two, I come from the Lake Region in Homer Bay County. We are not only talking about swimming. We have boat racing. And I want the CS to tell us what plans he has for uh, talent nurturing because this country is working towards youth empowerment. What are we doing on activities along the lake to ensure that through your ministries, oh, youth are Honorable empowered? Benzuda. Talenta Ayala is working, come on board and work with the Ministry of Women <laughs> Reform and Account. Order members, order members, we must make progress and we will close this session. CS, Honorable Cabinet Secretary, order members, we have already gone one hour overboard from the time allocated by the speaker. We will get to a close because we have serious uh, business ahead. Honorable CS, you will respond to these many questions. And uh, Honorable Majority Leader, when I look at the statement you have sought and the questions you had raised, the CS has not been able to respond to properly to Part C and Part D. So we will definitely be calling him back and maybe you can commit to that, because there are still many members with many questions on several of these issues. Majority Leader, as a precursor to the CS. Honorable Speaker, indeed I wanted to seek your indulgence, because I'm seeing we have gone an hour past the time that the Speaker had allocated, and in view of the other business, I wanted just to seek your indulgence. We allow the CS to take leave and probably answer some of those follow-up questions together with the others. And there are also other questions that have been asked by members. And remember, today we only call him on notice, and we will be inviting him again. We allow him probably even not to answer this one so that we proceed to the other business. Honorable uh, CS, you will answer to the ones that you can right now, but join that with your closing remarks. Take the shortest time possible. The rest of the questions will be done in the follow-up uh, session.
There is nothing out of order. Let the CS make the response. Uh, honorable Speaker, there definitely are challenges, I have to admit here. There have been challenges in selection of uh, teams representing the country in various activities. And it is important, I will keep on repeating this, it's important that we streamline operations of federations. One of the things that we'll be proposing when we bring a request here for amendment of the Sports Act is to include the entire Article 10 of the Constitution on national values in constitutions of our federations. And on the basis of that, uh, yeah, yes, the uh, uh, Section 10 of, of national values, because, Honorable Speaker, every single athlete in this country across the disciplines must be afforded the opportunity to compete for the opportunity to represent the country. That has really not been the case. And it is among the issues which we intend to work on keenly as we streamline operations of federations. There is also the question of gender. And I am glad really to inform this uh, house that as a ministry, we are very keen on ensuring gender equity in our sports by ensuring that every single opportunity we have involves both genders. This. What is out of order, Honorable Ruku? Madam Speaker, um, the minister is talking about keenness. And uh, it is true that uh, the ministry made the president to round Tarenta era when it was not ready. That is not part of keenness. The office of the president must be escadidra as far as executing the mandate of the office of the president honorable member, honorable and, the ministers, and the ministers and the ministers are more so. I hear you. I hear you. Of, member, honorable member, I hear you, but that issue was already conversed and responded to. Honorable CS. Honorable Speaker, should I run over the questions in the last session? Okay. Allow me then very quickly, and I'll try to be as brief as possible. Honorable um, uh, Fatma, I thank you for, for your statement. Honorable Alice Nganga, I want to admit that there is a need to communicate more. There is a need to network with members of parliament more robustly, and I want to make an undertaking that that is certainly is an area where the ministry will seek to step up so that there can be more interaction, more communication, more networking with the members of parliament. The program that uh, I alluded to of the 2,000 young people from the National Talent Academy is part of the Talanta Hela initiative, and these are young people who are selected by scouts during the school's ball games. And they were selected across nine disciplines. And they were selected from across the country because this was going on right from, uh, right from the regional level. And they were brought here for training. They were brought here for scouting. And I can combine this answer with the, with the question raised by, uh, I believe it was Honorable Umi, who wanted to know whether this talent academy, which we hosted here, was just an opportunity for young people to come here, or whether there was any deliberate effort for scouting. And I want to assure this house that this national talent camp is one of the key deliverables of the Talanta Hela Initiative. And I assure this house that the Talanta Hela Initiative is actually on and it is rolling. This national talent camp the Interlanta Hela Intercount Football Program, the Creatives Economy Program that is going on, a lot of activities are going on in the Talanta Hela space. And during this talent camp, all federations participated in the various disciplines, rugby, football, and the rest. 
and the purpose of federations participating is that we wanted them to start selecting players from this level for teams under those federations. For instance, we expect that the Kenya Rugby Union must have identified some young talents for progression to the Kenya under 20 rugby team. The national team technical benches participated. We had the national coach of the Harambe Starlets, the national football women team. We had the national technical bench of Harambe Stars, and the purpose was to start picking talents at this level. Because for football, for instance, Kenya has never had a national under-15 team or national under-17 or under-19 team. The purpose of this program is to start constructing age-capped teams because that's the best way to feed the, the national team and ensure that Kenya is supremely competitive. And it is during this program that we also announced that three young Kenyans had actually won scholarships to progress to foreign academies. Aldrin Kibet, Alvin Kasavuli, Moses Wamalwa have all been admitted to the NSA Academy in Spain to advance their, their footballing talents. So the, the, the camp is not just about coming together and gathering children together. The camp is actually to provide an ecosystem where they can receive elite training and they can progress to develop their talents to the next level. Um, quickly to Honorable KJ. Honorable KJ has asked two very significant questions. The question on FKF, we are fully aware, uh, Honorable Speaker, on the status of FKF, including the legal conundrum. But we had an arrangement with FIFA, and that arrangement was to progress FKF to a point where they can hold elections, because we have had serious issues in this federation. And I do expect that FKF should hold their elections as scheduled, because that, that is one way of starting to put the whole footballing ecosystem on a new kill. On the question of Azam TV vis-a-vis -vis KBC, I want to tell this house that again, as part of the monetization agenda of Talanta Hela, we have taken cognizance of the fact that all corporate sponsorship took flight from Kenyan sports. Live broadcasts took, took flight from, uh, from football. All the interest that we have had previously in sports has disappeared because of mismanagement, because improper running of this space. But I'm glad to report to this house that a package has been put in place. Allow me not to go into those details because it has not been officially made public and there are a number of partners involved. But I can confirm to this house that KBC is right at the heart of that program. And we believe that KBC must be afforded opportunity to build its capacity to become a serious broadcaster. And you must have seen that we gave KBC the opportunity to broadcast uh, the Safari Rally. We gave KBC the opportunity to broadcast the National Ball Games Finals in Buhungu. We gave them the rights to do, to, to do that broadcast live. And we are slowly assisting KBC to build its muscle. It is going to be part of a package that includes two major things. Number one, a sponsorship package that will see money going straight to clubs. And number two, a live broadcast package. Very soon, the details will be made public, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Rindikiri, um, I... I got your question on the Kenya Dev handball team. And the challenge we had with this particular assignment was the visa, visa issuance by the embassy of Denmark. Among the challenges we face daily is the late processing of requests by federations when they're preparing teams for international assignments. These requests come late. It becomes a big challenge to process funding and it is an even bigger challenge to deal with visas. And as you know, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, the ministry does not have control over issuance of visa. 
if you apply late for visa, it becomes extremely difficult for visa to be issued. And um, this is a matter where we have developed new regulations and we are planning to have a retreat or a meeting with the federations to share the package we have put together. What is out of order, Honorable Master? the speakers. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I was just wondering, I, I want to believe that most of the sporting events are known much in advance for the whole year and even beyond. Is the minister in order to say there is a delay in preparation of the visas which is without its control when we know that most of these sporting events at such a time. Why point. can't they do, the, the visas be prepared point. in advance? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes. Honorable Speaker, definitely calendars of events are normally known, but participation in these events is something that is initiated by the Federation. It's the Federation that is affiliated to the relevant international organization is the federation that gets the right to participate and is the federation that then brings a request. And it is true that more often than not, we receive very, very late requests. And it is something which we have put together a framework to help federations handle this matter a lot more smoothly. Honorable KK, thank you on your statement about Bohungu. And I can confirm that indeed, all the drama and film festival, the music festival that we had the concert in Nakuru today with His Excellency the President, and the ball games were fully funded by this ministry to the tune of 267 million Kenya shillings. And we have worked very, very closely with the Kenya Secondary School Sports Association and the Kenya Primary School Sports Association. And that whole program is part of our rolling out the Talanta Hela initiative. The, as I have already said, the back end of the Talanta Hela uh, uh, system is something that is being sorted out. And as soon as that is sorted out, then live streaming of that can, can start right away. Uh, Honorable Abu Ahmed, we are aware of, uh, of, of the issue you raised on the swimmers that went to Japan. But I also want to make it clear here that the regulations of the Sports, Arts, and Social Development Fund only allow the ministry to provide support through federations or through associations. It's the body that brings a request. And the challenge we continue to have with swimming is because of this challenge with the federation. As soon as we are able to sort this out, as soon as we are able to agree with the World Aquatics, that the committee we put in place can take responsibility for the swimmers, then it should be possible to offer some support uh, to, to our swimmers, both for the qualifiers and for the Olympics. And of course, participation in the Olympics is dependent on, uh, dependent on qualification. Honorable Mtunga, uh, your invitation to the book award, the book launch, I can uh, confirm to you while on my feet is that if the book launches tomorrow, I would be more than glad. Um, I, I love books. Um, promotion of uh, the literary arts is one of the areas which we need to improve. And certainly, Kenya could do with more writing, more production of books. And so I'll be more than happy, Honorable Mutunga, to, to come and join you for, for the launch of this book. Um, there was a question from Honorable Waluke on the 100 million given to sports, sportsmen, sportswomen, and could this be the source of my, <laughs> my troubles? What, what I can say is that um, 
we have really not treated our sportsmen and women right. You may want to know, honorable members, that the 100 million shillings that Honorable Aluka refers here was largely to, number one, clear outstanding awards going back to the year 2010. There are athletes who competed and represented this country from 2010 and they had not been paid their awards. We were able, honorable members, to clear all, those, all that backlog and we were also able for the first time in the history of this country to offer something to our legions. We honored our legions, our legions who have competed for this country for the last 60 years. And so I believe that that is a good way of spending money. Our athletes, our sportsmen and women are the goose that lays the golden egg. And we must acknowledge and reward them appropriately. And through the Hongera Awards, we'll continue to do this every single year. Honorable Justice um, asked a fundamental question. We have lost a hold on some of the events where we have reigned supreme, like the steeplechase. We could only manage a bronze medal yesterday during the steeplechase finals in Budapest. And I want to inform this Honorable House that I have sat down with Athletics Kenya and I have challenged them to go back to the drawing board so that we can reclaim our glory in our traditional strong sports. And I'm happy to also report that after that engagement, Athletics Kenya has submitted to the ministry a blueprint for youth development requiring 64 million Kenya shillings, which is being considered to go back to primary schools, to go back to the basics. Steeplechase requires special training. Steeplechase requires special equipment. The ministry has accepted to make special investment for Kenya to bounce back in steeplechase because it's an area where we, ha we, we have definitely lost, lost our way. Honorable member for Kesses on Kipchoge. Kipchoge is among the facilities, as I said at the beginning, that our sporting infrastructure had really, really gone under. Until last Saturday, when Kakamega Homeboys played the Libyan team Al Hilal, Kenya did not even have a stadium approved by FIFA or CAF. We had to do emergency rehabilitation on Nyayo to be approved by CAF for that game of homeboys. We have a master plan, and I would be glad to share with this honorable house that part of the Talanta Hela program is a sports and arts master plan on how to improve our infrastructure. That master plan includes revamping our international stadia so that CAF and FIFA can, come, can be comfortable with them. And as you know, we have put in a bid to host the Africa Cup of Nations 2027. We have made tenders for rehabilitation of stadia, and this Kip Keino is among them. These tenders were opened on 17th of this month for rehabilitation of Kasarani, Nyayo, and Kipchoge Keino Stadium in Eldred. As we await this program to start, we were able to do some emergency rehabilitation of Kip Keino, and that is where Kip Keino was able to host the Devolution Conference Games, which again I had the honor to open myself. Honorable Kangombe, uh, when I mentioned the issue of the account, I meant account details given by some of the athletes. There were a bit of issues which are being sorted out, and I believe that money should reach at least within a week, as I have uh, confirmed here. Concrete measures for swimmers, I have made it very clear here that we want to agree with World Aquatics on a program where we can have a joint effort between World Aquatics and the government of Kenya to resolve these issues. It will be important to get this court case out of court and get these factions on the table so that we can get Kenya Aquatics back on track. Because the people who are suffering are our swimmers and not those who are fighting. Finally, there was a question from uh, the Honorable Chief Whip um, that was reiterating a question raised by uh, the Honorable Majority Leader. 
that question on participation in Doha and in Paris. The undertaking I can give, and I have already given, let me reiterate it, is that we want to agree with World Aquatics to accelerate the process of withdrawing this case from court, of getting the elections for Kenya Aquatics done, and getting Kenya Aquatics back to be able to undertake their mandate because ultimately this is the mandate of Kenya Aquatics. And as we do that, we want to agree with World Aquatics on a framework that could allow our swimmers to compete even if that process is delayed. That is the best way to, to support these uh, athletes. Uh, Honorable Bensunda, I have uh, prepared all the records of the issues I have referred to and it is a, a whole world of records here, including the state of sports as we found it, as we inherited it. And as I've repeatedly said, we found Kenyan sports in a mess, a total mess. The efforts we have made to start revamping infrastructure, to create a pipeline for talents, to monetize the creatives and talents generally, and to just make sure that Kenya maintains her pedigree as a top competing nation. All this is in the records that we have and we'll gladly leave them here with the Honorable House. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable CS. I can note that uh, there are still very many people or several people who have follow-up questions. I have noted Honorable Abu, Honorable Irene Mayaka, Honorable Rueda, Honorable Rindikiri, but as the majority leader has had uh, presented, this will be done in the follow-up uh, session. I will therefore request that we let the CS out at this point so that we can proceed with the business of the house. Honorable Shaquille, you've just walked in. You've just walked in. Honorable CS, kindly take your leave. Next order. Order number nine, Committee of the Who House. Order members. I, I hope the Honorable Murugara and Honorable Kimani Kuria in the house.